It is Monday, so we're once again debating what the best legendary card for a champion of the realm is. Of course, we're talking paladins, and today we're talking tanks. Uh, we haven't done a tank yet. We did a healer, um, and we did a damage character. So today we're going to take on one of uh, Wilson's favorite tanks, Barrick, who's got a gun and he's going to shoot you down. Um, I am surprised that you guys haven't done a tank one. Nah, well, it's because this is only the third episode. Anyway, so we've got, as, as always, three legendary cards. We're going to go through them real quick. The first one is Architectonics, which is one of my favorite named powers in the game. Legendary cards, as you say. Um, as we all know, Barrett can throw down two turrets once every 10 seconds, um, maxing out at two. Um, and this makes it so the turrets cannot miss, and they do 20% more damage. And have a three-second uh, faster cooldown, which of course is a just a flat three-second cooldown reduction on whatever their cooldown is, which is by default ten seconds. So you go from a seven-second cooldown in between turrets. And if you're like me when you play Barrack and you're a turret spam an animal, it's a very good card. Now we're going to the second one, uh, which is Fortify, which I believe is his free one, um, the the one that you don't need to unlock. It gives his barricade 4,000 health. His barricade, of course, is his shielding ability. He does this, bloop, and he gets a nice little shield curtain that remains in place while he can hide behind it. And, of course, you drop your turret behind the shield, so they have to get to the shield to destroy the turret to get to you, uh, which always makes it fun when uh, you're trying to figure out whether you want the power to destroy shields or deployables. And finally, Tinkerin, uh, which is a boost to his primary weapon, which is a blunderbuss which has a spread like a shotgun and has one of the biggest fall-offs as far as distance is concerned. And Tinkerin fixes some of that. His blunderbuss now has improved fall-off, better shot clustering, and deals 100 more damage. Now, Wilson, this is your favorite tank to play. What is your? What do you feel is the best legendary card? Uh, for me, it's got to be Architectonics. Architectonics. Yeah, uh, because when you play Barrick, you want that turn on cooldown as fast as possible. Um, and this card makes it possible to do that. So um, those three seconds matter for me. So I put one turn down, and then I'm just waiting about seven seconds or so. And I could put my next one down. So if one gets destroyed, I could put the next one down. Um, when you combine that with a couple of other cards, and you're talking about... Um, healing yourself, um, healing the turret, um, shooting faster and all that stuff. Uh, it means a lot. Additionally, you get the 20% damage with the turret. So it means you can just, one goes down, boom, you could just pop another turret up. Um, so it's it makes it super, super effective. Um, and then lastly, the part of the card that's my favorite is then your turns never miss. So as long as they can see you, they're just going to hammer you down every single time. So when you combine it with a lot of other cards and you put them down, like this has got to be the best card for Barrick. True story. True story. I had no idea that the turrets could miss until they introduced legendary cards. But when I read that line, like I'm like, the turret could miss? I'm like, I could juke a turret? Because I kind of felt like they were hitting pretty hard. So... So I, I used to like Architectonics. Like that used to be my, my go-to card when I used to play Barrick. For all for all the reasons you mentioned. He has those uh those cards in his deck that that give you uh uh CC uh crowd control reduction. Yeah. Um if, if you're next to your turret, you have the one where you can heal the turrets. Um it can heal you. If if, if you yourself is next to, you're just so like you're turret centric, like everyone has that mm -hmm. one move in their kit. That defines them and the turret was yeah, that's barracks thing yeah he's got that shield but it's all about the turrets for him and then uh never forget it didn't matter if you were if, if you just get your face ripped off by a flank right like if sky comes up behind you or buck comes up behind you because his shield right so his fortify is really you know it's really good because it's a shield that you drop and you can walk through but your enemies can walk through it too and that's the whole the whole cat and mouse of, of playing 
barracks sometimes, right? You drop your shield, you drop your turret behind the shield. They have to say, hey, I don't need to destroy the shield to get to you. I can walk through the shield. Well, now they've got you and a shotgun waiting for them. And that's kind of like how you do that bait back and forth. But that also makes you super susceptible to tanks because you can you have to abandon your shield. You drop your shield and go, which is an advantage and a disadvantage. Just like if we talk Fernando, the fact that you walk with your shield is great because you're a giant shield bot, but you also can't shoot because you're a giant shield shield bot. So it's like it's that give and go. You'll see it with Makoa too when he makes his little turtle walkie um, shield, but then you can walk right into the dome and slap him in the head a little Just bit. Beat him. Um, that 4,000 extra health on his deployable shield is a lot of health. Like, you don't realize how much health that is. But again, I'm not a huge fan of that for the same reasons we just talked about. It doesn't matter if it has 10,000 health. If you can just walk through it and start a fight, then it doesn't matter, right? Which is my, my actual favorite for him is tinkering. Because you don't even... I, I think it's something you don't put a lot of thought into. I mean, uh, so we, we, we're going to talk about because this is going to go counter to some of the stuff that I said in the other videos where I say the higher skill cap to use it makes it kind of less appealing. So with tinkering, you have to be able to shoot the bad guy, right? Like, uh -huh. so as opposed to architectonics where you just drop a turret and the turret does your dirty work for you. I totally get it, but... When you, when you give your shotgun range, it's not something people are expecting, right? And it's not like a crazy amount of range either. I, I feel the car is pretty balanced. But each shot does 100 more damage at a longer range with better spread. So I don't know if anyone's fight or shotgun in real life, right? But like when you go hunting, you, you can put a thing at the edge, which I can't remember, uh, to, to change the spread. So he has a blunderbuss. So it shoots like this. But what it does is it narrows down your shot group. So you're you're not sniping, but you're it makes it a sh from a short range weapon to a medium range weapon, mm. doing a hundred percent more damage. A hundred that bro flat hundred more damage, like like per shot, right? So that's five hundred more that that dude. You're a tank. You see, I think you gotta remember you're a tank. Barrick is tanky. He's got a shield and he's got his turrets. So you're talking about one way. Your turret's doing the damage with you being a short-range threat. But your turrets can always do damage, right? Your turrets don't miss enough. Like I said, I didn't even know the turrets could miss until this card was published, right? So if you think about it, if your turrets are already putting that work in, you drop your shield, you drop your turret, and now they've got two decisions to make, right? They're either going to shoot through your shield and then get you, or they're going to be cheeky and jump it. If they get cheeky, you can actually start bringing them pain way further out than they're expecting. Mm. And then once they burst through your shield, they're done. It actually amplifies. Again, it's dependent on you, not the kit. It's dependent on your ability to hit the guy, which is why I think tinkering is actually his strongest thing. Because, again, no. you, you can build cooldowns, right? Like, you can build cooldowns on Barrack. Very and true. and I think his cards, his cards give cooldowns to some of his abilities. I don't remember off the top of my head if they give a, a cooldown to his turrets itself. But uh, I, I mean, it's you know, it's a big whammy. You know what I'm saying? And 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 if, and if you're have giving you used them it? tinkering, yeah, it hurts. It, it hurts. hurts. You feel it, like you're more effective. I I find out uh, again. I was using architectonics every time until yeah. I was getting my face wrecked by a barrack, and I couldn't figure out why he was hitting me so hard. And it was him. He was hitting me hard. He okay. was hitting me hard. Not his turrets. Not his... Him. He was wrecking me. And I couldn't figure out why. And then I realized it's just... He wasn't missing. He was shooting me. He was being accurate. And where I thought my safe range with him was... Was not my safe range. He was hitting me from farther. So if I was jumping that shield... I was getting destroyed. I was mm -hmm. getting destroyed. So, and then I've I've played with it before, and it makes a huge difference. And again, if if you're someone, if you're look at it from the from the enemy's end, where they're like, ah, he's got a shotgun. That's a short range weapon. And then all of a sudden, you, you're getting picked at medium range for a hundred extra damage a shot. Whew, it's nasty. Mm. Nasty. Well, I haven't played around with tinkering. Once I found uh, oh, architectonics, it's it's been great because just. I'm there to tank. I'm not there to shoot people in the face. I'm just there either to hold the point or push the point. 
um, and just be annoying. That's that's my thing. Um, but hearing your argument, ah, I might give it a try uh, just to see how that is and, and see if how different it is to play Barrack with that card. But for me, it still has to be the Architectonics as the best legendary form. Uh, like, Ar- Architectonic feels like a crutch. Like, once you use Tinkering. Like, once you're using Tinkering and, <laughs> and, and you're the one hitting people. It's it's always, in games like this, when you play a character who has deployables. Yeah. Like, you're, like, so dependent on the deployables. On deployables. And then when the deployables aren't around or they're destroyed or they're on cooldown or something. And you're caught out. Like, it, you kind of feel helpless. And this character, and Barrett definitely felt like that before the legendary cards came out like with barrack you would drop your turrets you would drop your shield he's all deployables yeah. barrack yeah. shield a- escape and then his ult is another deployable so and that's all he was and then whenever your turret was on cooldown if you would drop your turret and someone like um oh uh cassie like uh if, if cassie or um or canessa would snipe it from some weird angle i'd be like oh my god i'm naked I naked in a room full of people. I don't have my turret. What am I gonna do? So it, it, that that's why it, it was so good. That's why you you know you always build the health on your turrets and everything else. But mm-hmm. tinkering just makes you feel like way more utility because because you're already full of all of this other stuff and now all of a sudden you can hurt people. Mm. And and Barrett could always hurt people. I'm not saying that Barrett couldn't hurt people. I don't want that to be the message I'm getting across. I'm saying that, you know, the more you play the game, you, you develop an expectation for, for what your enemy can do to you. And then yeah. when all of a sudden they exceed those expectations, you're like, what am I doing wrong? I hear you. You know, before and, you come and- to the conclusion that some people are just better than you are. But but, but before that, you have that thing. It's like, oh, my God, he, he, he tweaked. He tweaked just this one little thing in their build or... Or they, they move something a little to the left and to the right, which is which is why which is why I love a game like Paladins, where it just it doesn't just go this dude does this, this chick does that. It's hey, there's a little subtlety here. There's a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, this situational stuff, and it gets really good. I definitely I want to give it a try, uh, just so I can have the full spectrum of it. Ah, that um, means I won. That means I won a debate. I changed your mind. I don't know about that. Suck it. Uh, <laughs> still. If you're very good at your deployables, like you said, uh, you don't necessarily use the shotgun like that. You're just literally waiting for the cooldown and making sure that you're you're alive and well. You're floundering, bro. If Scott was here, he would have stood his ground. All right, anyway, <laughs> so um, that's been it. We should do a flank next week, and then uh, we'll keep in that rotation. Of course, there's way more damage characters in this game than any other, so... But we'll try and keep it as rotation uh, as far as we can. And we have to catch up on the characters who've been here before we get to the newer characters. Um, which, sorry. That'd be nice. Yeah, so we, we, we're just going to knock them out in no particular order to keep you guys guessing. If you guys have anyone you want to hear us uh, chat about, uh, hit us up in the comments below. Of course, that subscribe button, it gets lonely if you don't press it. Um, this has been No Right Answers Gaming.